One of the questions I ask in my Elevate Masterminds application form is where your business is at this point in time financially and where do you want to see it in the next 12 months. And if you do not give me a proper tangible answer, then your application is going to be rejected. Why? Because if you as a business owner aren't paying attention to how much money it's making or to the financial data, then I personally believe that you are not serious about your business or you're not here for the long run. Hi, my name is Nilufa. I'm a marketing coach and also the founder of Nilu & Co, a digital marketing agency based in Kakanad, Kochi. In today's video, I'm going to dive into the exciting world of financial planning for business owners like you. Whether you're a solopreneur, a startup founder, or a seasoned business pro, these strategies will help you steer your business towards financial success. So grab your favorite notebook or open that spreadsheet because I'm going to drop some knowledge bombs. The first thing that I recommend that you do as a business owner is to make sure that your business goals and personal financial goals are separate. It's like having a separate set of work clothes and another set for pajamas. Both are essential, but they shouldn't mix. You will have to distinguish between your personal and business objectives. Your personal goals might involve buying a house, taking a dream vacation or retiring early. Whereas your business financial objectives would be focusing on growth, revenue, sustainability and of course profit. Remember, clarity here is key. So writing everything down with a pen on paper is like giving your goals GPS coordinates. And then there will be others which are like crystal balls. You don't have to deal with them right now, but you do have to prioritize them on a long-term basis. If you are separating your personal financial goals and business financial goals, what do you think you should also do here? Have two separate bank accounts. Time and time again, I have come across several women business owners who do not have separate bank accounts for their business needs and personal needs. And what's even worse is that they're usually using their husband's account for their business purposes. This is not a great idea in the long run. Why? Because lines get blurry and the numbers get jumbled up with one another. It's easier to track your business's health when your financial data is not mixed up with your personal data. The next thing you should do is to prioritize wisely. There will be immediate needs like paying bills and long-term plans like retirement fund. On a day-to-day -day basis, as a business owner, there will be balls that you will have to juggle. Some will be like hot potatoes, urgent you will have to pay for them right now. The next strategy I recommend is to explore funding options. There are two ways that you can go here. One is self-funding. So you're going to bootstrap your business using your own piggy bank or your own savings. You're going to invest your personal assets or profits back into the business. The plus side of this method is that you as a business owner will have full control and you do not have to worry about someone knocking at your door to collect debt. However, this method can limit your growth unless and until you come from the Ambani or Athani family. The second category for funding are the external sources. Who are these external sources? Investors, loans, grants and crowdfunding platforms. Here you will have to assess the risk versus growth potential. For example, an investor is going to want a piece of your profit buy. The third financial strategy that I'm going to recommend here is liquidity. What is liquidity? Liquidity refers to ease with which an asset can be converted into ready cash without affecting its market price. To put it simply, it's how quickly you can turn something into cold, hard cash without losing value. As a business owner, you should make sure that you are checking your cash flow statement regularly. Is money flowing in or Basically, are you making an income or are you always paying for expenses? Many times when we are running a business, we come across unexpected expenses. Maybe your laptop stops working and you have to purchase a new one or you will have to sign up for a subscription service that's going to make your designing life easy. So there are always these unexpected expenses popping up. Having a buffer 
of cash that will cover one or more of these unexpected expenses can help you breathe easy as a business owner. The next thing you should do is to plan for your taxes. Understanding tax deadlines, filings and local regulations is going to help you in the long run. If you are someone who is scared of these things, then it's best to hire a part-time or a full-time accountant so that you're paying your taxes on time. Now remember, financial planning isn't about being a math genius. I completely understand that when we were growing up, we were all scared of numbers or mathematics because of the way it was taught to us. However, understanding your finances isn't just limited to addition or subtraction. Plus, we are living in a day and age where we have access to several apps, YouTube videos, and other resources, both paid and free, which will help improve your finance knowledge. If you found this video helpful, hit that thumbs up button and share with a friend or family member who might need it. I'll see you soon.